In this video, we are going to discuss front end steering components. Uh, I did a video recently where we, dis we uh, discussed the suspension components in front wheel drive vehicles, which almost all vehicles are now. And in this video, we're going to cover the components that are associated with steering. So we're going to talk about uh, tie rod ends, outer tie rod ends, inner tie rod ends, and the steering rack. And this basically here is our steering rack. And what we're going to do is talk about this little system that I have built here so that I can display this um, easily. And for the rest of this video, where I'm standing back here is basically would be the front of the vehicle. So in other words, if there was a, this was actually together and this vehicle was moving forward, I'd be getting run over. So that's uh, the perspective you want to keep as we talk about the steering rack and the components associated with it. So what I have going on here as far as my little vehicle simulator is this is our steering rack. Over here where this vice grips are, this basically would go up into the front of the vehicle and the steering wheel is attached here. So for the purpose of our video, this vice grip is the steering wheel. So now I discussed this in our last video over here when I discussed uh, drive axles and that kind of thing. The way this is set up, here's a drive shaft, it turns. We can see out here, that would be our wheel, it's turning around kind of thing. This end here of the drive shaft is connected over into the transmission. So the transmission is turning, it's spinning our wheel, everything is fine. This system would be just perfect for a vehicle that never had to turn, but that wouldn't be a whole lot of use. So that's when all of this assembly comes into place, which is our steering rack here, which is, has on most vehicles, it's a fairly simple setup as far as what the connections into this steering rack are. It's basically bolted to the underside of the vehicle. The 6x6 six six I got here is just keeping it up in place. So there's a couple of brackets come up underneath and they connect this to the underside, underside of the vehicle. There's going to be two connections, high and low pressure, that goes up to your power steering fluid. And that's why it's so easy to turn a vehicle that has power steering because this fluid is coming up in under pressure from our pump into the steering rack and then it's so, the, the valve system in here makes it very easy. As soon as it's unbalanced it'll push as we see here out on the end of the rack. Here's our outer tie rod in here. And even just a little bit of movement there with that vice grips, as we can see, I'll get my videographer just to go out here on the end here. So I'm just turning the vice grips, which as I said is connected to the steering wheel. And there it's putting the force and moving that wheel, which is turning like so. And the force from the steering system here is moving this back and forth. So basically the steering rack itself is not a particularly complicated unit to replace because as we discussed you're going to have your high and your low pressure port here coming from your power steering system and you got to remove <coughs> your brackets that are holding this all into place. So we've got two connections there, we have our brackets underneath, this out here, if I get my videographer just to kind of move around this 2x4 here, we would release our tie rod end out here or remove it from the tie rod itself. So really we have a connection out here at our tie rod end on either side, so there's two connections there, our brackets and our lines to the power steering system. The problem with these, this is where it gets uh, relatively simple job can become quite complicated and time-consuming is that these tend to be very difficult to get at. 
particularly these lines in my experience here in Canada anyway will tend to be corroded and rusted up and a lot of times what you end up having to do I've done is cut them and actually splice them which is a job in itself so that's just something to keep in mind we're going to change one of these in a future video but uh, I just think that's worth mentioning incidentally uh, I just should probably mention this protective boot is over the ends of our inner tie rod in here connecting up onto the rack I just took that off so we could see what we're doing so I just want to discuss the outer tie rod end a little bit because this is where it connects to our steering knuckle and we can see that that I'm turning the vice grips back and forth which is our steering wheel and that's the outer tie rod end putting force and pushing out on our steering knuckle that way if you were making a that would be what a right hand turn I'm looking at this thing backwards or if you go the other way and it pulls it in this is a real major wear point here because there's a ball joint in this tie rod end it's packed with grease and rubber we did a video on replacing these and basically that's connected by actually I just put that nut on there but that's connected by a castle nut here and you put a cotter pin it's very important that these tie rod ends do not get too loose so there's a castle nut the cotter pin goes through it we did a video on replacing an outer tie rod end here's an outer tie rod end just to go into a very brief description of it it moves back and forth like that the reason being is that the car is the uh, vehicle is moving along and it's hitting bumps these tie rod ends are going up and down like that and have to be able to change their distance a little bit and now this is a really badly worn tie rod end I don't know if, if my if this is going to come out in the video but as I pull that in and out like that you can actually see that moving and what happens is because the metal on metal of this ball in here as it wears even though it's grease packed eventually the grease stops getting in around there and that's extremely dangerous when that happens reason being if that releases actually comes out of part of a tie rod end and I'm just gonna get my videographer to go back out here again so suddenly you're driving along this wheel is spinning this tie rod end turns and it's basically the same thing as if this nut released because it's gonna just it's gonna release from this part that releases down the side and suddenly your wheel is like a loose can and it can go anywhere so that's why tie rod ends being worn are extremely dangerous okay so at this point we discussed the inner tie rod end here we discussed the outer tie rod end and it's possible you might be thinking why is this kind of unnecessarily complicated because what we have with these two inner and outer tie rod ends are two points of potential wear because they can both move and as we discussed metal on metal whether it's grease filled or not is eventually going to wear so I'm just going to try to briefly describe the logic behind this and it's uh, it's a surprisingly really neat system uh, because the purpose of this other than allowing a certain amount of movement up here from the between the the steering knuckle and the rack system is it allows for a really easy method of changing the distance between the steering rack and the outer tie rod end and the reason that we want that is because it makes for a way to do a wheel alignment really easily because if it wasn't for this system and this tie rod in the middle here and I'm going to try to show it if it wasn't geared up this way and in order to do an alignment you would basically have to take the tie rod end off and I'm just going to get my videographer to show us something here on this tie rod here it's threaded 
and here's a locking nut here. Now the idea of this is that to change that distance as we say, so when you're getting your uh, wheel alignment done, this is how the distance is changed. So, just for the purposes of displaying how this is done, I'm going to reposition and we'll just quickly... Okay, so for this last segment what we're going to do here is a pretend wheel alignment. So I just want to basically show you why this system is laid out as it is with the inner, the outer tie rod ends and the, uh, the logic to all that. It might make it a little, uh, solidify it a little bit better as to how the system goes. So what we're going to do here a bit of an uncomfortable position but my videographer is doing a fine job of getting in there and showing what we're talking about. So we're just going to say here's the inner tie rod end. There's our outer tie rod end. We want for a, for a wheel alignment what we want, we want to be able to do is to change that distance. Now I think as I mentioned before this is threaded so we can change the distance there and if it wasn't for the fact that we have, we're able to spin this here, you'd actually have to take this tie rod end off and spin it around and change that distance. But here's the slick part of it. You go into your mechanic, he gets, you're going to do an alignment. We're talking toe by the way here, which is the distance from there to there. That's the most, really the most critical part of an alignment. They do camber and caster, but in my opinion this is really what they, the only thing they really do most of the times anyway, but that's just my idea. So, mechanic gets your measurement, discovers that your toe has to be, that, that distance has to be changed, and he wants to make it smaller. This, this, so he's going to push the front of the wheel out by doing this. So, what you got to do is release our lock nut there, which obviously is already, so you release this. Okay, now that, has, that was keeping this outer tie rod end at that particular place. Now we released it, turns it back, wants to change that distance. Now what we do, and hopefully we can, if you kind of keep it a watch out here, as I spin it here, you'll see this distance change. As I put my wrench on here, and actually spin the tie rod. Maybe it'll show up. So what I'm trying to get at here is this, this only works because this ball joint here on the inner tie rod end can spin. So we're changing the distance out there. Now the mechanic's got his high-tech alignment machine Hopefully you can see this being pulled in there. I can't recall which way we're going to align it, but it doesn't matter for the purposes. So we spin it, spin it. Suddenly he gets the right distance. He says, okay. We have the right amount of toe. Leaves this at that distance that we just set. Now the length has changed. Puts the locking nut up there. Holds the tie rod with one wrench locks this into place with the other one and if you're ever doing this be very careful that you have the right side wrench on here because you do not want to strip that because then you won't be able to get a good grip for when you're locking this nut in so anyway hopefully hopefully that'll give you the idea of how that works so now that that's locked in person turns the steering wheel there we go, and this is locked in place and everything is tight. So hopefully that gave you a rough idea of how the steering components, the inner and the outer tie rod ends, and the tie rod itself are all connected together.